Welcome to another installment of Boot Camp for the Saints, and today we're going to take a look at Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, which gives a very detailed description of what we should be seeing in the last days, if in fact this is the last days. But uh, how did I come across this? Well, I don't know, for those of you that are Seventh-day Adventists and have read Ellen White, I ran across this one. So take a look at it. Christ declared that it was in the days of Noah, so it would be in the day of his coming, and the war, the bloodshed, the wicked deeds of the world fill the world today. Well, she wrote this, I don't know, back in the late 1800s. I mean, it looks like it was written for today, and, and, and we're going to get into it. And we're going to dig deep into the uh, actual root meaning of the words in Genesis chapter 6, verse 4. Uh, Those who keep the law of God will, like Enoch and Noah, give to the world a message of warning. In Jude, we read, Enoch also, seventh from Adam, prophesies of these things, saying, Behold, the Lord comes with 10,000 of the saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Now it does not sound like today and, 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 and pay attention this it says God is going to come Lord is going to uh, come with ten thousands of his saints to, to execute judgment upon and to convince all the ungodly. So they're going to know about it. And get this, this is really what, what prompted me to take a look at uh, this chapter in Genesis. This whole chapter is a warning of the feeling that will exist in the world and that will increase in intensity to the close of time. Okay, that's taken out of uh, 18 manuscripts, uh, page 39, chapter 4. Adventists will know how to look it up, but we're going to just take a look at the Bible and see what that has to say. What I did is, is, is I centered on one single verse out of this whole chapter. Why? Uh... What you want to do is you want to look for repetition. Words that are repeated that really don't need to be repeated. And in this particular case, what word do we see here repeated? Uh, we see the word men here. We see the word men here. And we see the word men here. Now let's just read this. Uh, there were giants in the earth in those days and also after that when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old men of renown. I mean obviously this, this sentence could have been worded a hundred different ways so it didn't really need to repeat the word men three times. And the strange thing about it, let's just skip down here. See, what you do is, is I'm using eSword, and when you see something in eSword, you want to study it, and you want to get into the Hebrew or Greek definitions, you go on to the King James Plus. So here we've got the King James Plus, and... Uh, I'm just going to look at the uh, uh, three men here. And they were uh, daughters of men. This is H120. Okay. And the same became mighty men. This man is H1368, which were of old men, H376. Okay, the word men is repeated three times, but get this. For some reason, 
this particular verse has the word men in it three times and it uses a different Hebrew word for the word men. Why does it do that? Well, we're going to get right into the study and take a look at it. <clears throat> so here we go. I just uh, highlighted these and, and, and put them in bold and put them in red, all the words we're going to look up. So we'll go through these words one at a time, and we're just going to quick look at the major portion of the definition. Giants. Now, I know there's like a million interpretations to this verse, and people go way off base. They want to prove their point. They go, ah, I know what it's talking about. So basically, if you follow one of those studies, you know, you get into it, and after two minutes, it's like they're not even following the scriptures anymore. But this time, we're going to stick right to the scriptures. Okay? We're going to do that by looking at the Hebrew meaning for for these key words in this one tiny little verse. Okay, giants, uh, H5303, and we look at it, it's a feller. Uh, there we go. We got the old uh, the old English that we got to deal with. Okay, so uh, properly it's a feller. Uh, a bully or a tyrant, which is tyrant seems to be the, the key word that, that we're going to stick to. I... I I put them in bold and underline the definitions, the key definitions we're going to use. And we got to look at this uh, 5307. Okay, this is a prime root. This is exactly what we're looking for. When we start getting into these things, we want to look at the prime root, okay? To fall in a great variety of applications. And when we look at the definition, inferior be judged okay so we're gonna take this tyrant an inferior tyrant that's ready to be judged that's the definition of giants here I don't care what anybody else says I don't care what movies you watched I don't care what videos you watched I don't care what you know what forget about that stuff we're gonna take a look at what the Bible has to say for a change okay because realistically, I mean, if people have been misled to take the focus, take your focus off of what the Bible is really trying to say. And when we get to the end, you're going to see exactly what I mean. Okay, next word is days. Well, it should be pretty easy. But when we look at the definition, it's meaning to be hot. A day. Okay, what is all the talk about now. Global warming. The earth's getting warmer. Blah, blah, blah. The whole left, the, the, the World Economic Forum knows how to uh, uh, save the planet and global warming. The Democrats want to spend trillions and trillions. I, I, I just saw an article today saying uh, they want to pass a bill to spend $93.8 trillion to combat global warming. Why are they doing it? You know, the devil sees this stuff. He knows Hebrew better than any of us ever will. And uh, he knows there's this prophecy in here contained within Genesis that's going to tell us the days are going to get hotter. They, that's, that's part of this prophecy, okay? So, sons. Okay, it should be a pretty easy word. What does the word sons mean? It means a son. Well, it also means a builder. So that's that's pretty important. And when we look at the, uh, the primitive root here, it means to build. Okay, so, you know, it can be literally, it can be figuratively. Uh, you know, a son or a man builds a family, builds a house, builds this, you know, has children, all these different forms of building. But how does it actually pertain to this verse? We're going to take a look. Okay, daughters. Now, daughters is, is, is kind of surprising because we have all of this liberal stuff and this uh, feminist movement. And the thing about it is you watch all these videos on the feminist movement and somebody asks them, well, what does the feminist movement want? Uh, we don't know. You know, they ask them, well, okay, you know, 
And, and, and the feminist will tell you, a guy's supposed to provide, he's supposed to protect, he's supposed to... Okay, what does a woman do? I don't know. <laughs> they're a woman. They, they, they say they're being unequally treated and, 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 and they need uh, equality and all this other stuff. And, and they got no idea of what their role in life is. But they're going to tell the world, we all got to change. Okay. They lack detail. That's what we're going to look at right now is detail. Okay, so what is the meaning of the word daughters? Okay, so we look at it. First off, it means a daughter. All right, but then uh, that's from 1129. We look at 1129 and get this. The primitive root here means to build. And when we stick this to build in, uh, what we're going to do in the end, we're going to take all these definitions in here and we're going to put it into the verse and then read it from the uh, uh, both the literal and, and figurative, uh, I use the word spiritual, point of view that this verse has. Okay, now we're looking at the first men, the H120. Get this, this comes from uh, H uh, 119 means Rudy that is a human being okay Rudy what's Rudy Rosie it's red uh, to show blood in the face what does that remind you of Edom the definition of Edom is red and then you know uh, Edom was the uh, uh you can look at the Bible. I mean, anybody that knows the Bible knows there's all these prophecies about the Edomites and all this other stuff. Sometimes they were pretty good. Sometimes they just weren't good at all. He was uh, actually uh, Israel's brother, you know? So Israel grew up to be a nation. And Edom grew up with the Edomites to be another nation. They opposed each other. But, you know, just keep that in mind. That's that's a study for a different day. I don't want to get too off track here. Okay, same. Well, what could be in the word same? This is what I mean. you gotta you got to look at all of these words in there. And, and, and all you got to do is just, if, if you're on your ESOR, just hover over it. And it'll pop up and it'll give you the definition. And it'll tell you if you got to look at it. You know, this is a mas masculine plural of H1931, so we got to look up that. So what does the same mean? It means they. You know, okay, here it pops up a little bit late. Okay, uh, 1931. What else does it mean? It means the feminine beyond the Pentateuch. A primitive word, the third person, pronoun, singular, he, she, it only express one emphatic or without a verb. So uh, what is this telling us? Uh, basically, it's telling us that, you know, these people are going to be really into their pronouns. <laughs> who, do you, who do you know that's really into their pronouns? <laughs> I just, I just love. I, I, I mean, I didn't touch any of this stuff. You can look this up in the Strong's Concordance. <laughs> I just love this. I had to get a laugh out of it first time I read it. Uh, singular, he, she, or it. <laughs> and you know how they put the she and it together. I, you know, okay. <laughs> so God's got a sense of humor. You know, and, and, and we see it expressed when we start looking into the original Hebrew language, like we're doing right now. Okay, men, another definition for men. What's this other definition for men? Intense, from the same as 1397. It means powerful by implication, world, warrior, or tyrant. Okay, so we look up this... 1397 uh, this is from 1396 and, and we're going to look at all of these okay 
a valiant man or warrior. Okay, so we're, we're, we're getting into this. You see how this one actually fits in more closely to the giants, which seems to be misinterpreted in the King James Version. Okay, now we go down to 1396, uh, strong by implication to prevail. And we're gonna we're gonna take this powerful entire and plug it into the the verse and 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 read it with these spiritual definitions in hand. Okay, old. Uh, how many different meanings can we have on the word old? Well, we'll see. The Hebrew language is really complicated, but still easy to figure out when you go through it. Uh, and, and, and a lot of times we don't really understand these things or which meanings to to plug into the verse until you know this evidence starts unraveling in the world like it is today and then we look at it and we go man this is as clear as day how could I have missed it I've been over this thing a hundred times I've you know what I've heard a hundred sermons on this verse and nobody mentioned any of this stuff well you know, this is this is perfect timing. Okay, so old means a part of, uh, from or out in many senses. So uh, that's from 4482, and that's from an unused, it should be root here, meaning to a portion. It's a part. So it's a part, part of. So we're going to take that and plug it in at the end. Uh, actually, what we've got is H5769. So we've got to take a look at H5769. Okay, that's from uh, H5956. Properly canceled. Canceled. Aren't we looking at the cancel culture right now? So it has a part of canceled. So, uh, but then it gets kind of interesting when we look at the next one, uh, 59, 56. Uh, this is the primitive root. And this is what we want to get down to. It means to veil from sight. That is concealed. So, yeah, it's a part of something that's concealed. Does that make any sense? We're going to plug this all in, and it'll make perfect sense once we write it all out. You know, or it says write it in a chart, and you'll see exactly what it means. And people will run to it to see what the meaning is. Okay, now we're getting into our third word for men. So, what surprises are we going to see here? Uh, basically, it means a man as an individual or a male person. But that comes from H582 and that H582 comes from 605 it means a man or a mortal. Okay, we can go along with that. But what kind of man? What kind of mortal? We know there's three different men in this one verse. What kind of man is this? It means to be frail, feeble. Okay, is this painting a picture in your mind already? I mean, I mean go with your imagination. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Okay, renown. What does renown mean in the Hebrew? Okay, uh, actually, it's 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 from the Hebrew word shame. <laughs> you know, <laughs> kind of kind of close together with this men being feeble right here. Kind of all fits in. Uh, this is actually a primitive word, but get this, it's uh, from seventy-seven sixty. And compare it, but I didn't bother comparing it. Appellation. What is an appellation? It's 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 a name given something. Okay, as a mark or memorial of individual 
Elodie. <laughs> okay. Uh, doesn't this sound like the left? Like, they always got to call attention to themselves. I mean, look at the way they dress, the way they act, and everything. They're constantly putting a mark on themselves as a memorial for their own individuality. I mean, we haven't seen this in, in, in any generation. You know, I mean, people used to stick with their own little groups and have their own little, but that was really limited. You know, that was limited to small groups. You know, someone always has to stand out in the crowd and all this other stuff. Not even to stand out and have the whole world notice them. I mean, a lot of us just call it insanity. So, uh, we're going to follow the 7766 down to a, a primitive root to put. So, we're going to put a mark or a memorial of individuality upon themselves. Nobody is going to do it for them. They're going to do it themselves. Doesn't this describe that generation? Okay, so we looked up all the words. So, the next thing we do, pretty simple, we just read through the verse again. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bore children to them, and the same became mighty men which were of old. And you can see these, these, these words uh, that, are, that are in lighter gray and are uh, telecized, you know, slanted, they were added to make the sentence sound right in English. Okay, how else do I explain it? Okay, so here we go. Uh, there were giants, and for your tyrants to be judged, in the earth in those days to be hot. And also, after that, when the sons, the builders of God, came in onto the daughters, the builders of men, Rudy, you know, back to Edom, that is a human being. So so this one is, is pointing to a particular, I think it's pointing back to, to Edom and the prophecies and everything, but that's going to be way too deep to study in, in, in a short video. And they bore children to them, the same, that's they, you know, here we get into their pronouns. Feminine, beyond the Pentateuch. That's beyond the five books that Moses wrote in the Bible. So they're beyond that, and that's feminine. I mean, I mean what do we see from, from the left? You know, the girls, the women call themselves feminists and try to act like men. <laughs> and then the guys try to act like Women not only try to act like women, but it's really irritating because they try to act like six-year-old girls. You know, I mean that that's that's just totally sick. I don't even want to get into that here. Okay, became mighty men, powerful tyrants, which were of old a part of or concealed. In other words, they're 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 trying to hide a part of what they're doing. <laughs> men, okay, it means a man. But it's a frail and feeble man that's doing this, of renown. Uh, put a mark or memorial of individuality. So, what is this whole verse in here explaining? Well, it, these inferior tyrants are setting up to be judged. No kidding. In the days to where we're going to see. Climate change. God says there's going to be climate change. That's why the devil wants to spend so much money and uses a distraction that claiming they can control the world. I mean, the Egyptians did the same thing, especially when God said, you know, free the slaves. Well, you know, they called in their gods for even tighter measures. You know, if, if, if the Egyptians had mass back then, you know what they would have been doing. So, after that, these, these sons of God who were builders of God, 
And they came on to the daughters of men, the the Rudy kind of Edomite, the human beings that weren't really following. You see, there is this mixture. Uh, there's a lot of the church, unfortunately, is calling for empathy for these people that are basically... I, I, I got a question for you. I thought... They ended slavery back in 1865. Then how come the Democrats think it's okay to say they own your children and they can sell your children off to the highest bidder, whoever wants to brainwash them? I mean, you know, come on. Let's take a, a basic look at this. And the same, they, and, 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 and all the other pronouns, it's, it's feminine beyond the books that Moses wrote. Right? It, isn't it? I mean, they're adding all these pronouns and they're going what? Beyond what God dictated to Moses. Right? Okay, and they became powerful tyrants. Which were a part of some kind of concealment. Yeah, aren't they trying to conceal what their real motives are? You know what the real motives are. They want to they want to own your children as sex slaves. I mean, plain and simple. They are not going to stop with just brainwashing and changing the sex of your children. They want to take your children completely away from you and do whatever they want. Why do you think God is really getting oh a little angry right now. Okay, these men, uh, which are really not men, they're, they're frail, they're feeble. And this is exactly what we see. I mean, these they're biological men trying to act like women. <laughs> they're putting the mark or memorial of individuality on themselves. And, and, and that's exactly what they claim. Oh, they want to be individuals. They want to be accepted. They want to be this. They want to be that. Okay, the question is, how did God know all of this stuff way back then when he was talking to Moses, telling him what to write? <laughs> you figure it out. But the thing about it is, we go back, we look at the original Hebrew, and now we can clearly see this is exactly what they were talking about in Genesis chapter 6, verse 4. Now remember, this whole chapter is a warning of the feeling that will exist in the world and that will increase in intensity to the close of time. Uh, I don't know what you think of Ellen White. You don't... I'll give you my impression of her. Uh, there's a lot of books that have a lot of her books have been rewritten. And you know what they did with the books that they rewrote? Is they took out the Bible references that she used. This one, uh, if you go a couple of paragraphs up, she, she actually mentions the book of Genesis. And, and she quotes out of the book of Genesis and a couple of times in this particular manuscript. So it's it's pretty easy to find, but I get so upset because they, the humans, don't understand the point that it's not what Ellen White wrote. We can we can live without it. It's the way she put these stories together in a particular order, and I'm when I'm saying stories, the stories in the Bible. Her writings are completely useless without the Bible scripture to back them up. She's leading us back to the Bible. Matter of fact, she said the little light leading to the greater light. So why'd they strip all of the verses out of the newer books that they're coming out with? I don't know. I got a bone to pick with them, but <laughs> I actually wrote a book on it, putting it all together. 
And the uh, publishing house said they rejected it. And then a couple months later, they got all their big famous authors that uh, came out. I saw five other books. They were just copies of the book that I read with their famous author's name and picture on them. So, you know, I don't care. You know, I'm, a, I'm an easy guy, I forgive them. But, you know, we got to get back. We don't need to reuse Ellen White. There's different ways of putting this stuff together using only scripture. And I'll go through the different methods that we can use. I just explained one of them, which is repetition. Three times the word men is used in this one sentence. So a good teacher always repeats details to draw your attention. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to scan all the way down to the bottom here for my closing. Uh, don't forget to subscribe, to like, to share, do all this other stuff. You know, I can't really tell you when the next video is, is, is going to come out because basically, you know what? <laughs> when I'm inspired to look into something, I'm going to look into it. If I'm not inspired to look into something, I'm not going to make something up just to produce another video hoping. I don't make any money off of this video stuff anyway because YouTube will not sponsor or put anything religious on the top of their search list and of course google and the other search engines are never going to put anything religious on the top of any of the search in internet search engines so it's up to you spread it around if you think it's important share it with your family and friends dig in a little bit deeper uh let me know what else you find in this chapter and and whatever other chapters you find that link to this. So have a great day. Keep on praying. And remember, 90% of prayer is listening.